Greetings, my goblins and ghouls. You read the title right. Today, we are starting on the feeder. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it. This one's just gonna be prototyping the electronics. I think it's gonna take a few episodes to get through the feeder. <laughs> At least, oof. Anyway, let's see what we're working with. Ah, this is our mission if we choose to accept it. This tape needs to move very, very precise little increments whenever I tell the feeder to do so. Now the folks in the electronics industry helped a ton by adding these little dots along the tape. These little holes serve as a way for a gear to kind of grab into the tape and push it forward. So I made this guy. Not only does this wheel have the pips around the outside that perfectly fit into the tape, but it also has these little cutout windows in it. And these are actually gonna help the feeder know where the wheel is so it knows when to stop driving the tape forward. And the way it's gonna do that is with this guy. This is a small reflective sensor, so it actually has a little LED in it that shoots out IR light and then a detector that sees how much of that light comes back. So the closer you move something to it, the stronger the signal is gonna be. So if this little sensor is right underneath my wheel as it's spinning around, I drew a little diagram here. So as the wheel moves across the sensor, the light is either gonna shine through the hole or it's gonna get reflected back by the wheel. Then using the output of the sensor, this kind of sinusoidal wave here, we can determine how far forward the tape has moved. So this is our feedback system. Now there's gonna be a second motor in the feeder and this is to remove the film on the top of the component tape. Not only is there this black housing tape, but there's this kind of crinkly clear film that holds all the components in so they don't come out. This needs to be removed somehow, so I'm gonna have a motor kind of pinch it and pull it off of the top. I'm still kind of fleshing that part out right now. Bottom line is I need the feeder to control two motors forward and backward and to get data from the distance sensor. Well, this is the distance sensor and this is the motor driver and they're wicked tiny. <laughs> so first I'm gonna mill a breakout for them so I can actually prototype with them. Time to boot up the mill. <laughs> Okay, so I threw a couple resistors into the breadboard along with the distance sensor, and then I hooked my oscilloscope up to the output of the sensor. And check this out, this is so cool. If I just put my finger over it, watch what happens to the scope. Whoop, whoop, isn't that cool? It's really granular between like zero and, I don't know, three millimeters, four millimeters. But beyond that, it doesn't really give me a lot of a signal out. But the first four or five millimeters off of the sensor, it's like super granular. That's so cool. Oh, that's dope. So I can also read the signal with an Arduino, which is what the feeder's gonna do. It's gonna read the signal and figure out how to drive the motors based on that. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so I just wired up the motor driver. The motors that I'm using are called an N20 motor. It's this adorable tiny little motor with a very small gearbox on the end. So these things actually put on a lot of power. The motor itself spins really fast, but the gearbox brings the speed down and the power quite a bit up. I love these motors. I use them for all kinds of stuff. They're super cheap. So I'm gonna write a very tiny bit of firmware to go on the Arduino to send out a PWM signal to the motor driver. And then hopefully this guy's gonna start spinning. And then it's just a matter of making it spin based on the input from the distance sensor. Sick. Okay, so I messed up. I was writing some code for the Arduino to send a PWM signal to the motor driver to get the motor to spin, and then it wasn't working. So I go into the data sheet and I'm looking through, and then I see this. Not only does the pin that's labeled ground have to be connected, but then there's a pad on the underside of the chip that also needs to be connected to ground. Well, I already soldered it on. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is drill a hole through the bottom of the board until I get to the IC and then solder through the bottom of the board. Oh my God. 
I figured that that pad on the bottom of the IC was only to dissipate heat, because it's a motor driver, you want to be able to have it connect to a bunch of copper so it'll help dissipate. Nope, turns out you have to do it for the actual functionality of the chip too. Always read the data sheet, every time. So now I'm gonna try and drill a hole through the bottom of the board to access that port. Wish me luck. <laughs> Wow, that is the jankest thing I've ever done. So I thought I was gonna have to solder a wire from that bottom pad out to like an extra pin. But what I did is I just soldered it to the main plane of copper that kind of doesn't have a dedicated trace. So now this whole surface is connected to the bottom pad. So I'm just gonna short this big old ground plane to the ground pin and it should work just fine. I can't believe that freaking worked. Of course it doesn't work. <laughs> Okay, that didn't do it. <laughs> it must be something else. Oh my God, finally. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, what a pain. So I guess that has to be connected to something. If it floats, it just doesn't do anything. Oh, thank God. I thought that chip was blown. Yes, look. It finally works. The motor driver chip I'm using has a pin for feedback to check and see how much current is going through the motor. I thought it was okay to leave that floating. It totally wasn't, you had to ground it. I grounded it and everything worked fine. So I can try my firmware and actually try and like get it to change how fast it's going and then integrate it with the distance sensor. <laughs> The wheels that I printed didn't have big enough slots to actually trigger the sensor, so I made one out of paper. This one just has a lot bigger slots that are gonna be easier to read the signal from the sensor. was to use a PID loop to control the position of the wheel based on the sensor value. If you don't know what a PID loop is, I'll add a link to a good video that describes what it is. But when I tried to actually implement a PID loop, it was wah, 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 wah. it was oscillating like crazy. I think it's because this thing is not putting out an incredibly consistent value from the sensor. The paper's kind of wavy. I'm also just like holding it over it. So the value is varying a ton. My PID loop doesn't have anything consistent to go off of. So ultimately I just put a proportional, if it's greater than this value, drive it backwards. If it's under this value, drive it forward. Words, and it works super well. This thing actually will kind of position itself on every index. Ultimately, when I put this thing into an actual feeder assembly, I want to implement a PID loop. That is the correct way to add this feedback. A PID loop is a proven way to control systems based on sensor feedback, so I definitely want to end up doing that at the end. But in the meantime, this works. This totally is like reading in values from the sensor based on the indexes on the wheel and uh, 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 driving them where it needs to be. Woo cool. Then it's just getting that connected into the tape and moving my components. Oh baby. So I know what you're saying, Steven, this is only feedback for one of the motors. The other motor peeling the tape off has no feedback. And you're right. I'm hoping I can just drive the motor that peels the film for some set known amount of time based on how many indexes I'm moving on the other motor and that would work okay. Also, if it pulls a little too hard and kind of winches the tape forward, I have a PID loop on this motor that can kind of winch it back a little bit. So I think it should be okay. We'll have to see. I need to get all the mechanical stuff together first to see if that's even gonna work. This is so freaking cool. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the comments and likes you guys leave. It's really cool to see your feedback and see what you think about the projects. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can check out my Instagram page where I post pictures and updates about my projects way before they come out on YouTube. And I'll see you next time. sneak peek I left in the background.
z-axis pretty fancy on that that's another video